Hello, my name is Jorge Barrero. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the materials, uh, specifically bump maps and displacement, and how to apply them into the V-Ray uh, for SketchUp materials. This scene is just a simple plane uh, we can start with. Uh, there's one material called tiles, which is uh, what I'm going to apply to this plane. So I'm going to click on tiles. Uh, it's just simple color. Put it on that uh, plane. You can see that I'm going to render. And basically it's just a simple white plane. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a um, paver texture map that I have. Uh, and then we can use that uh, for our uh, testing. So I'm going to click on texture here. Uh, I'm going to add, go back to folder, bump map, and I can try this uh, stone paving. I think it works uh, pretty good. There it is. Seems to be not too bad of a size. Um, I can make it a little bit bigger uh, just to kind of see the effect a little bit better. So there's the, um, the tile, uh, I guess the paving pattern. Uh, when I render that, you can see uh, it's pretty straightforward. Simple, um, simple texture map. And uh, one thing that's important to understand, uh, it's usually best to do the UVW map uh, using SketchUp's uh, texture adjustment and texture position rather than uh, V-Ray for uh, SketchUp materials. Uh, it's easier, uh, visually you can see it, and uh, it will automatically translate into the V-Ray for SketchUp materials. So you can see the texture map starting to render here. I can probably just stop it. Um, but um, you can see it, you know, it, it looks as uh, I would expect. It does look a little bit flat, and I think that's where the uh, bump map and uh, displacement uh, help with the illusion of, of giving a little bit more depth to something like this. I'm going to close this to cancel. I'm going to open the V-Ray material editor. Uh, there's my tiles. I'm going to update the preview with my texture. Now you can see it there. To add a bump map, uh, simply what I have to do is open up my maps uh, menu here. And you can see there's bump and there's displacement. Uh, the place for the texture maps is grayed out uh, because they're not enabled. As soon as I check bump, uh, that becomes uh, enabled and I can click on that map. Uh, it brings me to the uh, texture editor. Right now we have nothing selected as a texture, so under type I'm going to select the bitmap. And under bitmap I'm going to click on file, uh, the small m here, to prompt me to pick a uh, bump map texture map. So I'm going to go to a folder and here's a stone paving uh, bump open. I can update that and uh, see what it looks like. Uh, it's essentially a grayscale version of the uh, texture map that we have. I don't have to touch any of this, uh, the UVW transform, uh, because it's going to read essentially the existing uh, UVW map information from uh, how we position our texture in SketchUp. So all I have to do is just apply the um, texture itself. Uh, bump is enabled. And uh, the multiplier will control how much bump we see. So I'm actually going to take that up to 10 uh, so that we can make sure we see it. If I update my preview, you'll see the effect taking place here. Uh, you can see how it's actually pretty pronounced. I'm actually just going to take it down to for now. Apply, close that, I'm going to render this, and uh, we should notice the bump effect on our texture map. Um, render there, and uh, you can see, um, we can wait a little bit, you can start seeing the effects of the bump taking place in our texture, giving a little bit more depth to our plane with our pavers um, and I think that's the benefit of um, you know using bump and what's important to remember is that you don't have to uh, adjust any uh, UVW map on the v for SketchUp material uh, editor uh, everything is read by um, 
by V Ray to um, the sketchup materials. So um, I think we get the idea here. So bump can only take us so far. If we need to see a little bit more definition and more depth into our uh, texture here, into our geometry, uh, that's when we use displacement, which basically takes a uh, bump, which is merely an, illu an illusion of depth. Um, displacement actually takes the geometry and deforms it uh, to give us uh, a true depth in our, in our geometry. So I'm going to cancel this now. The process for adding displacement to something like this is very much the same as bump. Uh, basically, you just turn displacement on, click on the M for textures for the maps. Uh, under type, I'm going to select bitmap, and under bitmap, I'm going to click on file and pick up the same uh, bump map. Uh, it should work for now. Click open, uh, take a look at it, make sure I got the right one. And uh, pretty much it, uh, multiplier again, um, determines how much displacement. Um, I can take that probably to around 5 for now, make sure we have enough. Apply. Uh, one thing I will mention though about displacement, um, let me close the material editor. Displacement uh, tends to work when uh, the planes or any geometry that you have is grouped. Uh, right now, this plane if I render it uh, won't have displacement so one thing I'm gonna have to make sure I do is uh, take this plane and group it and uh, last but not least uh, one thing you have to check on the render options there is a section for displacement uh, what you want to take a look at is how big that displacement is going to be based on your grayscale's uh, values on your image right now it's uh, four pixels I can take that up a little bit maybe six uh, subdivisions, uh, it's the subdivisions for the entire plane right now, um, 256 should be enough for our test. Um, you don't really want to take this too high because it will slow down your rendering. Uh, it's probably better to keep this number low and subdivide your geometry rather than increase this and keep one large plane or in reality two large polygon triangles. Uh, and the amount also um, affects how much displacement we're going to get. So. Let me uh, render this and see if we can get some displacement. And in the preview, uh, our radiance map, you can already see um, our geometry is changing. Uh, we're going to get nice displacement on this image, probably a little bit more than what we need, but um, I really want to illustrate uh, the effect so that you have a good comparison between bump and displacement, uh, the difference in render times as well as uh, the difference in uh, the effect of the final product. Uh, displacement is pretty popular for rendering grass and uh, also you know things that are somewhat organic in nature like rock walls or things uh, things like that. So but um, we'll let this finish. You can see the render times actually are uh, substantially slower compared to no bump uh, and even some bump. So what I will recommend is uh, when you use displacement, uh, use it sparingly. Use it on uh, smaller areas or at a distance. Uh, when you have a lot of uh, displacement on a scene, uh, it can really take a lot of memory, a lot of time. So, but uh, the effects are pretty fantastic. Uh, so we'll let this run, and then we'll get take a peek at a uh, little bit of displacement going on. So. Okay, so here's the final result of the uh, displacement rendering. Um, render time is about 12 minutes, so you can see there's a significant increase uh, when you use displacement, but you can see the results and how the geometry is being deformed. So, thanks.